What makes you qualified to work with somebody with CP? Well, being that I am an individual with cerebral palsy, uh, born with spastic diplegia, so you compound that with my understanding and, and expertise in adaptive physical education, I think I'm pretty qualified. My name is Dr. Tom Moran, Associate Professor of Kinesiology at James Madison University. Uh, in 2007, I was actually presenting at the World Congress on Disability. Many of you may be aware of this wonderful conference uh, that at that time took place in Orlando, Florida. And after my presentation, I was walking through the exhibit hall and happened to come upon the Quadricizer exhibit. And as an individual with cerebral palsy, specifically spastic diplegia, um, Mr. Bohannon saw me and, and asked me to come and, and try out the quadricizer. Uh, and at first, I honestly didn't know what to think. I like it. it you know, right now I'm struggling with uh, back spasms. My hip flexors are really tight. This is helping me uh, go through a full range of motion and loosen things up. It's really helping to pump my ankles and uh, you know basically improve my overall flexibility. One of the interesting things that I realized straight away was here I am as a now adult with CP, but it allowed me to reflect back on my experiences as a young child, and unfortunately having to go through numerous years and sessions of physical therapy. And unfortunately, through those experiences, yes, I realized they were meant to be beneficial, um, but one of the things that was very detrimental to me and, and um, very violating in, in some degree was how I had zero control over what the therapist was choosing to do to me. I was, you know, being asked to, to lie on this therapy bed while they chose to stretch my hamstrings from here to kingdom come. And in many situations, a lot of the stretches and or exercises I was doing was giving me extreme pain. And I just, I thought, gosh, they have all power over me. And this is painful and this is no fun. And so, as I you know, was getting on the quadricizer, I began to reflect on some of those experiences. And one of the initial things that I realized about this machine, this passive active motorized therapy system, is it allowed me to be an independent mover. It allowed me to have some control over my body. What opportunities are there for students with very significant physical disabilities or multiple disabilities. We have our six students with multiple disabilities. We have our three main variables of physical, activities of daily living, and then their ability to attend. All right, obviously to protect the students we have them labeled as a, B, C, D, E, and F. How can we take the quadricizer, a motorized passive active therapy system, and build it into the educational structure and environment of a classroom? We are also able to look at their level of strength for those that were able to actually show us the difference between the passive movement while they were on the quadricizer and those that were able to do active engaged movement, those who were actually pulling on their own. For many of these participants, they could go days or potentially a week or more without having a bowel movement in class. For others, 
it was help with feeding. So how did their movement impact feeding? Not just their ability to self-feed, because some of them still were not at that level, but even with supported, are we improving the efficiency of movements? The second piece was feeding, along with feeding, was swallowing. Quite a few of these participants, because of the spasticity of their muscles, or the low tone, would actually begin to choke or gag. Students A and D became more independent feeders. Again, still needed some support, but were able to be more independent in their own feeding. This teacher noted a significant decrease in the number of choking outcomes, choking episodes, during feeding, after getting off the quadricycle. What we were able to see was eye-opening. We were able to take range of motion measurements on all the key joints. So you think about the shoulder, the elbow, the hip, the knee, and for some, the ankle. We wanted to initially look at how would the quadricizer improve academic performance. Had issues with head and neck control. And so they, they were dropping their head. Going along with attention is eye contact. So now we're trying to help them pick their head up. But by building the quadricizer into this special education classroom, they were able to engage for 30 minutes. Each exercise bout was 30 minutes, five days a week. What we looked at here is a, is a person's ability to grip and actually hold on to an object. So the average improvement for all the participants, all six, was an increase in two seconds. Again, for many people you think, oh, that's not that much. For these six students, that two seconds, if you think about it, is the difference between having that spoon with the food and dropping it before it gets to your mouth and actually getting it to your mouth. We were able to actually look at their leg strength as well. Student D improved in her ability to stand from 15 minutes before she started working with the quadricizer to by the end could stand for 35 minutes. Student E, as another example, went from the ability to stand for 10 seconds, again, this is all with support, but 10 seconds, to being able to go stand for a minute and a half and actually be able to provide some assistance in his transfer. So again, he was in his wheelchair and now by the end was able to assist with the transfer from weight bearing on his feet to taking those few shuffle steps and actually being able to assist with getting himself in the quadricizer. This actually was the idea of the special education teacher who is a huge proponent of movement. She wanted to look at the actual total movement time and so this teacher said can we use our movement on the quadricizer and equate not only the movement with the legs, but the movement with the arms into actual miles of movement. Student A, over the course of the study, 43.8 miles of movement. Student B, 69.9 miles of movement. Students E and F each had 40 miles of movement over the course of the study. And again, we were able to calculate that by 
revolutions per minute times the number of minutes. A lot of students would come on Monday after the weekend and the teacher would note, or I'm sorry, the parent would note that they had zero bowel and bladder movements over the weekend. Every single one of the students after their exercise bout on Monday morning would have a bowel and or bladder movement at some point during the day on Monday. All six students because of the amount of repetitions that their body was actually able to engage in in a 30 minute exercise bout helped their system enough to excrete the waste that for some of them may have been in there since Friday afternoon. We know all the, the research when we talk about typically developing kids and the importance of physical activity, the importance of recess, the importance of brain gym, the importance of physical education, and hence why movement is such a big part of conductive education. But I wanted the opportunity in this educational classroom to be able to show the teacher, the administrators, and now you all. Here was the impact of continuous, repetitive, controlled, fluid movement on these students' readiness to now take in academic information. I'm Susan Ellinger. I'm the director of the Shenandoah Valley Regional Program. So I assist all the special education directors in the surrounding six school divisions with wow. what we consider our regional classrooms. And those are our classrooms for our most difficult to serve, most expensive to serve, most disabled students for the most part. So we've been watching them use it and how it's really helped the students and helped their mobility and helped with just their general even um, attention to task, their happiness, they're happier after they've used the cue. So we've been really impressed and we're pleased to have it here. I think it's been a real win-win for everybody. I think the students are, are happier, they enjoy being on it. Um, I think it just, it, it helps them get moving better and I think, don't you think they're happier? Much happier. This machine is their sole way of getting all four extremities moving and, and having the movement that we take for granted that we're able to do, but they're not able to do that for various reasons. They need the support and, and they need the push through. So it gives them, it gives them movement. It gives them a change of position. Chad and Sierra are just sort of starting with it, but, um, but it's taught some of the older kids who've been doing it a little bit longer. Um, Ezra, for example, he's, he's learned how to, um, how to take steps and I attribute that the consistency. He's on the quadricizer every day, first thing in the morning, getting here, he goes on the quadricizer for an hour. And I, I really attribute his success in, in mobility to, to the quadricizer. And you think it's helped him take steps? Absolutely, he, that learning that reciprocal motion, um, that one foot does go in front of the other, that, um, that mobility, he's, he's developing mm -hmm. a motivation to, to move now and, um, and He's being, he's rather successful. One of our first goals for him was just to do a, like a stand pivot transfer. But um, at this point, we're looking at him actually taking, moving towards, towards an object. We were able to keep the exercise constant because my first question was, does this quadricizer actually have an impact on overall functioning? And now we know that according to this initial study, the answer is yes. But what I'm most excited about for them and for me is the Quadricizer provides an opportunity for each of these participants to enjoy the freedom of movement without the control of an instructor. They're moving on his or her own and also, they're now able to enjoy physical activity and movement through this wonderful modality that has never been provided 
and probably cannot be replicated on their own. And so I'm excited to see not only the initial impact, but as we continue this research and as we have the opportunity to follow these students through their middle school years and potentially into high school, what is the lasting impact of the quadricycle, of continuous, repetitive, fluid movement on the overall functioning for these individuals with severe and significant disabilities?